The Knicks Post Game Show is presented by Tri-State Audi. Visit your Tri-State area Audi dealer today. The Knicks wrapping up the regular season. Another huge game from Obi Toppin. A season high 34. But the Pacers went for 41 points in the fourth quarter for the game. 19 of 34 from downtown. Fan Appreciation Day at MSG. She is very happy to get a Jalen Brunson jersey, that is for sure. Knicks wrap it up, losing to the Pacers 141 to 136. Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito, Alan Hahn, Wally Zerbiak. Great hustle by Wally getting over here right after the game, even though he was on the MSG radio network. What were your impressions being in the arena? Oh, it was outstanding. The fans were really into it. When that game got close down the fourth quarter, the fans were going crazy. But the Knicks defensively had no answer for the Pacers. And one thing I've noticed, Knicks are struggling a little bit in pick-and-roll defense. Andrew Nemhard did a really good job on high pick-and-rolls turning that corner, getting into the teeth of the Knicks defense, creating for his teammates, finding open three-point shooters. Keep an eye on that moving forward. That's something I think the Knicks really need to clean up going into the playoffs. Yeah, that, that was something to remember against the Cavs two Fridays ago, like that game. There was a lot of that going on, and that's... And the Timberwolves. The, remember the yeah, Timberwolves? That game, game especially. Cool. But that has been in the last quarter of the season, something that all the players have talked about a lot. Tom Thibodeau has talked about a lot as well. And then that leads to a question about three-point defense, which is because when you then have to close on, a, on somebody getting dribble penetration, those threes are open. Now, the Cavs are a team that we saw that first game of the season were red hot from downtown, especially in the fourth quarter to win that first game of the season. So, yeah, I would say, you know, again, this game is this game, and we know that they're going to look a lot different a week from now. But if, if there's one thing in this game that you're like, this has been a trend, it certainly is that, is the inability to cover in pick and roll and then the close out on threes. All right, let's summarize this regular season. 47 and 35, Allen. Mm -hmm. Best Knicks regular season since the team won 54 under Mike Woodson, led by Carmelo Anthony in the 12-13 season. And the third best season since the 1990s. That's how good this regular season ends up. Yeah, it's been a fantastic season in all kinds of ways. They were a great road team. They, they finished out really strong at home. And they've got two guys that can get it done for you. And that is Jalen Brunson and obviously Julius Randle. And R.J. Barrett had a slow start to the season, but they really need him to pick it up in the post postseason. Mitchell Robinson, a piece that you have now. Uh, in this postseason, you didn't have two years ago. Manuel quickly with that playoff experience. Josh Hart, the addition of him at the trade deadline, like that finishing piece. Obi Toppin showing you what he can do in fast break. And this team, by the way, in the fast break has been great. Clutch moments like that. Oh, yeah. And then Emmanuel quickly letting you know, oh, yeah, well, not tonight from three, but still overall for this season could be the sixth man of the year. But, you know, Wally, when we look at the overall view of this team, you see, I look at it as the strength of this team is their depth. And that's something that I wonder if they can use in the postseason against the Cavs. Sometimes that's harder to do. Rotations tighten up big time. Uh, normally at home is when the bench makes a big difference. You get that little boost of energy from someone off your bench that really makes a big difference. The, the key to this series is going to be the stars. I mean, that's who wins in the playoffs. Yeah. It's going to be Brunson and hopefully, hopefully Randall is back and healthy and ready to go. And for the Cavs, you got to stop Donovan Mitchell. I mean, that guy has been on an absolute tear. He's been outstanding on the second half of the season. You know, he's going to be looking to score a lot of points against this Knicks defense because the Knicks are giving up a lot of points right now. Cavs defense is really good on the interior. You got Jared Allen, you got Evan Mobley. The key question is that when Jalen Brunson gets to the basket, what's the Cleveland size maybe going to matter with Brunson's ability to get to the See, I, I think, that, and that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the depth of this team and what we saw out of Grimes late in the year and his ability to knock down shots to be a playmaker and quickly when he comes in and all that stuff. When, when Jalen Brunson gets into the paint, which we know he can. I mean, he can get anywhere he wants on the floor. Some of the best footwork you'll ever see in the league, for, especially for a guy 6'1". And he is, we remember that game uh, in Cleveland. He went after Donovan Mitchell. I can't imagine they're going to let them go one-on-one. -on -one. I think the Cavs are going to try to trap him a lot, get the ball out of his hands a lot. But when he gets into the paint, it's what other players can do when they force him to pass the basketball. That's going to be important. While you're right, stars win in the league, no doubt. And if Randall is healthy, it's a lot harder for them to focus so much on Brunson and slowing him down and keeping him out of the paint because then you have to worry about Randall getting cooking, get him getting going. So if you have two of those guys out there, that's great. But I still believe 
that you have to have guys that when the doubles come and I kick it out to you in the corner or I kick it out to you, uh, you know, on the break, you got to hit those shots. And I got to yeah. believe that you can. And I think what we saw in the last quarter of the season, Grimes and, and quickly and other players kind of proving they can make those shots. You know, it's interesting. I know you say that, according to the numbers, the Cleveland's a very good defensive team. They're not a good defensive they're number team one against in the, league, the Knicks. Well. But against the Knicks, they're not. Because the matchups don't favor their personnel guarding the Knicks guys. Randall is a guy that can get hot from the three-point line. Mobley does not like to be out there chasing Randall around the three-point line when he's hitting those step backs. That's not a good matchup for the Cavs. It's a huge matchup for Julius Randall. And conversely, Brunson has always had success against Donovan Mitchell going back to the going back to the playoffs last year. So those are two key matchups that I think the Knicks are really going to have a good chance to really expose and exploit. Now the rest of the way obviously is going to be huge. Jared Allen and Mitchell Robinson I think is kind of a wash. I love that matchup. But uh, it's going to be a great matchup. You're going to have bona fide centers out there protecting the rim. But to your point, the Knicks have to make shots because they're going to have to double team guys like Randall and Brunson. That's going to be a huge key. The playoffs, it's all about individual matchups. And I think the Knicks, the reason why they've had success against the Cavs is their personnel really puts the Cavs personnel in a tough spot that they don't like to be, especially defensively. Can I also point out to me what is going to be another area that you watch in this series against the Cavs? And that is because both teams... The Knicks are number one, the Cavs number three in paint defense. They keep you out of the paint. They don't want you to score in the paint. They will give you the three. And you heard Tom Thibodeau talk before the game today. One of the things he liked a lot about this year's progression and the development of his team was that they became a high-volume three-point shooting team and a high-volume three-point make team. Now, they still shoot median three-point percentage, and those last couple of games they haven't shot it well. But if they can knock down those threes, that changes things as well because you're going to get them in this series. Are they good enough three-point shooting team to use it as a weapon to win the series? And the headline coming in, can the Knicks beat Donovan Mitchell after that offseason oh, yeah. of maybe trying to acquire Donovan Mitchell? <laughs> and while he's best career year, he had the best year of his career this year for Cleveland, has not done really well in the playoffs. With Utah, never got out of the second round. Yep. So that's obviously a huge theme. Knicks against Donovan Mitchell. No, that's going to be the big team. There's a lot of pressure on Donovan Mitchell, too, because that's been the M.O. on him. Just a bona fide scorer and a superstar that cannot win when it really counts in the playoffs. And one of the reasons why is because defensively, sometimes he gives up a lot of points to opposing guards. There's no question about his offensive firepower. I mean, this guy can score with the best of them. He's gifted, can get his shot up whenever he wants. Really explosive when he gets it to the basket. The key is defensively, are, who's going to win out that defensive battle? Tom Thibodeau is a great defensive coach. He's going to have to come up with schemes to make Donovan Mitchell's life difficult. If they can do that, the Knicks can win this series if they can slow down Donovan Mitchell. And you know how they can do it? That trade at the trade deadline gave yes. another layer to Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Because you have Quentin Grimes, who's really established himself as mm -hmm. your, he guards the other team's best player, yep. perimeter player. And so you have him. But you don't have to wear him out all game doing it exactly. because now you bring in Josh Hart, who's been doing that. He can guard one through four, right. more than willing to do it. And again, that last game in Cleveland, we saw that too. It was like, you know, Grimes played a little, a little bit, his battery drain. Okay, Josh Hart comes in now and he's at 100%. And Donovan right. Mitchell's just got guys coming out him left and right. And I think that's a, a key factor. And something else too, and I know we talked about it and you kind of dismissed it. The, the, the home road split thing with him on the, uh, in the yeah, postseason. Yeah, that's right. So he didn't shoot well at the Garden this year in the regular season. Talking Mitchell now. Yep. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell. And I look back, these last two years in the playoffs, his home road splits, like he's a good home shooter. But on the road in the playoffs, he has not shot the basketball well, especially from three-point range, and didn't do it at the Garden. And you want to see, you know, the Garden can work against you sometimes because everybody gets up to play there. Yeah. But in some situations, it can work in your advantage because you get two up to play here. And he being a hometown guy... How much will that affect him emotionally and, and energy-wise? And, you know, can the Knicks take advantage of that? A couple of years ago, Trey Young loved playing in the Garden, loved being the villain. He embraced that. Not everybody is built that way. All right. Game one next weekend at Cleveland. Game two at Cleveland. Games three and four will be here in New York at MSG. And MSG Network right here. Full pregame and postgame coverage of every playoff game that the Knicks play right here. First round and all the way through the postseason, full pregame and postgame coverage right here on MSG.